Now it come, train go boom. So about three months ago, I made a video essay about how Call of Duty is essentially propaganda for America. Now I'm gonna include the whole essay at the end of this little segment, just so you guys can watch it. And I really recommend that you do. It's not exactly what you think, and there is a lot of nuance to it, and I am a big fan of these games, so you might want to check it out because there are Call of Duties that do politics and war a lot better than others, but I recently read some stuff on BBC News and on Twitter about the newest Call of Duty. Now, I haven't actually played it, I will make it clear, and I'm going to play it, and I will probably make my own video on the politics of it, but there is one thing that is causing a big stir in Russia and like I said Twitter so I'm going to read the tweet that I saw so at the child ahead said so uh, it turns out that the new modern warfare game just sort of lies about a US war crime and makes it a Russian one because it needs the US forces to be seen as the good guys so I don't really have words how to feel right now disgusted so um, one of the characters called Farah says that a region you'll be fighting in is called the highway of death and says that the Russians bombed it during the invasion, killing the people trying to escape. Now, the person on Twitter goes on to say, the US bomb shelled shot and set alight probably about 600 fleeing soldiers and refugees. If you're going to make a gritty and realistic story, don't make war crime denial part of it, okay? Whoever wrote this should literally check themselves into the Hague. Now, when you read into the context of this line a bit more, it's clear that it's not necessarily referencing the highway of death between Iraq and Kuwait, but it's, you know, obviously in bad taste to call something the highway of death when you're using it in a different context because the game is set in a fictional country. But this has caused quite a stir in Russia. So the BBC was actually reporting that Call of Duty Modern Warfare faces Russian backlash going on to say the latest Call of Duty game has been hit by thousands of negative reviews over the, its portrayal of Russia. The 16th major title in the series has largely been praised by critics, but Russian media and users on the review site Metacritic Claim the game was trying to rewrite history and promote anti-Russian propaganda. A spokesman for Activision Blizzard declined to comment on the user reviews, but the company said the storylines were fictional. In a recent blog, the company said the game did not represent real events. Call of Duty Modern Warfare was released last week. The controversy surrounding the latest title stems from its Highway of Death mission. Players take on Russian snipers along a battered highway in the fictional country of Urkistan. However, some reviewers, including many writing in Russian, have noted similarities between the fictional road and a real-life thoroughfare that links Iraq and Kuwait. Highway 80, which connects the Iraqi city of Basra with Al-Jahar in Kuwait, was dubbed the Highway of Death at the end of the Gulf War in the 1990s. In February 1991, US-led troops attacked Iraqi soldiers, leaving hundreds dead. One reviewer on the Metacritic site said the game was demonizing Russia, while another said it pitted bad Russians against good Americans. A third user says the game has good graphics, but the plot is disgusting with propaganda and lies. Now, my video essay that is at the end of this video does touch on how the series does this a lot, but in my video, I really focus on how it depicts people in the Middle East and how it depicts people like the Vietnamese. Not so much Russia, but it is clear that Call of Duty obviously does push an anti-Russia narrative because the Russians are continually the bad guys. Now, I don't know the context of this game, but in the Modern Warfare series, they were the ultra-nationalists, and I make the point in my video essay coming up that they make the Russian baddies, the ultra-nationalists, to say that not all Russians are bad, but the context is a lot different. That was 2007, 2009, and 2011. Well, this game is influenced by modern day, where Russia are now the big boogeyman once again. But just another little note on the highway of death. The attacks became controversial, with some commentators arguing that they represented a disproportionate use of force, saying that the Iraqi forces were retreating from Kuwait and in compliance with UN Resolution 660 of August 2nd, 1990, and that the column included Kuwaiti hostages and civilian refugees. The refugees were reported to have included women and children, family members of pro-Iraqi, PLO-aligned Palestinian militants and Kuwaiti collaborators who fled shortly before the returning Kuwaiti authorities pressured nearly 200,000 Palestinians to leave Kuwait. Activist and former US Attorney General Ramsey Clark argued that these attacks violated the Third Geneva Convention, Common Article 3, which outlaws the killing of soldiers who are out of combat. Clark included it in his 1991 report, War Crimes, a report on the US war crimes against Iraq to the Commission of Inquiry for the International War Crimes Tribunal. So it's another point I really go into my video essay is that they use fictional countries to try and get out 
of them saying something bad about this region, but if you're gonna use a term like the Highway of Death, which obviously has connotations to this war crime, and then associate it with Russia who didn't do it, then obviously you're pushing a certain narrative or you're just extremely naive. I really don't understand how Call of Duty keeps making these blunders. I'm, I'm really skeptical of who is making these games because how no one can see this mission and see this dialogue and think this might rile some people up, this seems unfair. And what is more unfair is that the USSR was actually part of the UN coalition against Saddam Hussein. Now, as most history buffs and people who are familiar with the region will know, the USSR funded a lot of Arab socialist regimes with weapons and tanks, and of course Saddam Hussein's army was mostly armed with Russian equipment and Chinese equipment, but during the Gulf crisis, they said, we're not giving Saddam Hussein support, we support the UN coalition against him. So then to go on and say that Russians did something like this is pretty insensitive in my opinion. And you can make the argument, yes, it's a fictional country, but again, use a different term and don't blame it on a group who didn't do this war crime. There's plenty of things to criticize the Russians about, including in their policy in Syria. You don't need to, you know, really, like I'm saying, riff on real world events, which the US did. So it is really doing the Call of Duty no favors when people like me say it is essentially US propaganda, when it is essentially doing US propaganda. So after really talking about the latest Call of Duty, let's get into my video essay. Again, I made this a couple months ago. I hope you will enjoy. It really just goes into how the franchise as a whole has constantly done propaganda for the US and the US military. I feel it's quite a nuanced take. I feel I'm very fair to the series, but please watch it and let me know your thoughts. So to get this out of the way before we dive into the video, I am a massive gamer. I love video games and I always have. I own the Switch, I own the PS4, I own the Xbox One, and I'm currently playing Days Gone, Crash Team Racing, and Mario Maker. I think video games are a massive force for good, not only in the realm of societal interaction, but in terms of education. For me personally, I attribute video games to my love of politics and history, which I went on to study at university, doing a degree in history and a master's in international relations. I think video games are unfairly looked down upon. Games like the Assassin's Creed franchise are amazing at immersing you in the historical settings and teaching you about what it is like to live back then. It makes history so interactive and fun. Metal Gear Solid is another series that allows you to exist in a more modern day setting but deals with deep issues. Metal Gear Solid 3 and Peace Walker are pretty scathing towards America while educating the audience on nuclear deterrence. Peace Walker especially is amazing with many audio tapes to listen to of characters discussing world history, politics and philosophy. What makes it so engaging is that it's characters you love talking and educating you about these issues. You were saying Japan has a peace constitution too. Yep. Japan renounced war in Article 9 of its constitution, aspiring sincerely to an international peace based on justice and order. Told you my father worked on the Manhattan Project, right? You're familiar with it? The basics, yeah. It was the project that kicked off the nuclear age. That's right. Some of the finest minds of the 20th century, including multiple Nobel Prize winners, worked on it. That's Sartre, right? Well, there's hardly been a more iconic figure of his times than Che. Oh, he was more than that. He was a true revolutionary and a great warrior. I'm with you there. Can you believe that when he first went to Cuba with Fidel, they had only 12 guys with them? But they rallied. They brought in new recruits. Now to Call of Duty. I feel Call of Duty is another series that inspired my love of history. I used to love playing the Big Red One or the PSP installment as a kid, then going away to learn about guns and the politics of war. I feel many Call of Duty games do a really good job with their setting and themes. I feel Infinite Warfare does this well, but the pinnacle of the series has to be World at War. The 2008 entry is set during World War II, following the US Marines in the Pacific Theater and the Soviet Red Army in their push to Berlin. It is a series that is most brutal, showing us the horrific nature of war. There is full gore on display, a first for the series and cutscenes are animated with real-world footage of grisly combat deaths. It really makes you appreciate how awful war is and what a sacrifice it was for those who fought in the conflict. However, many entries in the series have not covered themselves in glory and actively promote unhelpful stereotypes. The title of this video is about how COD is propaganda for America. 
whether knowingly or not. It constantly paints the Americans as the unequivocal good guys, while Arabs, Communists, Asians and Russians are painted in a painfully stereotypical manner that often borders on problematic. The Black Ops and Modern Warfare games are the worst offenders here. I feel there is some Western Orientalism on display. Orientalism was a book by Edward Said which studied the relationship between power and knowledge. He used the examples of stereotypes the British used to make widely known about countries like China, India and Egypt during the height of the British Empire. This would make the British public view the Orient, the name of what they collectively called these countries, in a certain way. And these countries could not challenge the stereotypes because they didn't have the power to. Power gives you the ability to spread the knowledge. Now I feel certain COD games do a similar thing. In the lack of nuance they use in discussing important historical events or issues around war, they end up painting conflicts in a certain way. To give an example I will later discuss, in Black Ops 1 in the Vietnam War levels, you play as the CIA who are completely painted as the good guys and you fight the communist North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong who are painted as the mustache twirling bad guys. There is no nuance used here. To many people playing Black Ops, this becomes their knowledge of the Vietnam War. As there are no Vietnamese gaming companies who could challenge COD's portrayal, the depiction of the war helps prop up existing stereotypes. They see America as good and communist Vietnam as bad. Despite this being one of the worst imperialist wars of all time, where the Americans and her allies constantly slaughtered civilians in mass and carried out a massive array of war crimes. But there is no sense in Black Ops that this may be the case. It isn't even morally great. It's Nam, baby, and the US slaughter there is depicted as an awesome and heroic war for freedom. With the framing of the video done, let us get into more specific examples from throughout the series. Shoreline coming into view. Copy, Striker 6-4. Feet dry in 10 seconds. Copy. Taking fire here. Roger that. We've got RPGs down there. Modern Warfare 1 was released in 2007. The smash hit would revolutionise the series, the genre and video games as a whole. I greatly enjoyed playing this game as a 12 year old kid and found the whole campaign awesome as well as the multiplayer. However, as I think about this game as an adult, I find more problems with its representation of the military and America's wars in the Middle East. So Call of Duty Modern Warfare was created, written and developed during the height of the war on terror. Following the 9-11 attacks in September 2001, a US-led coalition immediately invaded and occupied Afghanistan, overthrowing the Taliban government. The Taliban, however, did not go away. They began an insurgency campaign against the coalition forces, and nearly 18 years on, the US are still fighting the Taliban in Afghanistan. In March 2003, the UK and the US invaded Iraq and toppled Saddam Hussein. The justification for the invasion was the bogus claims that Saddam had links to Al-Qaeda, and had aided them before 9-11, and he also possessed weapons of mass destruction. The US immediately dissolved the Arab Sunni Muslim government and army and tried to replace it with a Shia-led democratic system. What happened was that an insurgency was unleashed. Many different Arab groups, both Sunni and Shia, started a guerrilla war against the American and British forces. Many foreign Islamic fundamentalists came to Iraq to fight the Western forces, including a group led by al zakawi A brutal Jordanian jihadi, he became the poster boy for the fundamentalists. He eventually pledged loyalty to Al-Qaeda and his group became the Islamic State of Iraq, which would eventually form into modern day ISIS over the years. So it was the aftermath of these invasions and during the growing insurgencies when Call of Duty Modern Warfare was written. And like many pieces of media, it heavily buys into some orientalist tropes when dealing with the betrayal of Muslim peoples. Essentially the story of Modern Warfare has a dual plot. In Russia, ultra-nationalists are trying to take over the country to restore the former the glory of Russia through militaristic expansion. In the Middle East, a general called Al-Assad takes over an unknown Middle Eastern country, and here lies part of the problem. But Middle Eastern country in question is never ever made clear. Perhaps the thinking behind Infinity Ward was the area was too hot to really portray a real life country. However, this doesn't stop them in their portrayal of Russia. Instead of making modern day Putin led Russia the enemy, they make the ultra-nationalist the enemy, so it isn't a commentary at all on modern day Russia. So why could they not take a country in the Middle East and apply the same logic? So let's take a look at how this country is portrayed. Now the flag looks like a possible mix of the Saudi flag and Angolan flag, 
but it's altered somewhat. Al Assad looks reminiscent of Saddam Hussein in his military garb, but is significantly younger. But Army, known as Op 4 in multiplayer, generally look like a stereotypical Arab army with some more terrorist elements thrown in with some enemies wearing headscarves around their faces. It is basically an amalgamation of Western perceptions of the Middle East from the last four decades, an authoritarian militaristic Arab regime with some terrorist elements to it, basically ticking every global stereotype of the region. No nuance is attempted here, no attempt to explain the country or its origins, no attempt to explain why the US have to invade the country and kill Assad. It is simply a big bad created from the fears of Americans in the mid 2000s and as such perpetrates myths about the region. Remember what I said about Orientalism? Well American media consistently paints the Middle East in a way we see in Modern Warfare 1. Infinity Ward choosing to portray it this way helps prop up and further spread the stereotype. They may have felt making the Arab country fictional would help them escape such criticism but in my opinion it makes it worse. Apart from playing as the president of this fictional country when he is executed, or seeing some Arab civilians in this level, every single Arab character in the game is either a villain or an enemy soldier. These people all have absolutely no clear motivation, apart from that they must obviously hate America because that is a stereotype of how Arabs feel. Players are allowed to speculate on what their motives are, but based on the geopolitical situation at the time, it pretty much writes itself. All of this may have been okay had Infinity Ward attempted to make some Arab people good guys. In the Russian narrative, you fight alongside the like poor loyalist with Kamenev. These guys are clearly the good guys. Why could there not be any native Arabs helping the Americans fight Assad? Why is there absolutely no attempt to humanize any non-Western character? Why do they not even show civilians after the first level? Under deeper analysis, the betrayal of the Middle East in Modern Warfare 1 is typical Orientalism and is of course problematic when Arabs are portrayed this way with little power to respond. This is the same Orientalism found in films that came out after Modern Warfare like The Hurt Locker and American Sniper. So simply put, the portrayal is problematic because it does nothing to humanize the region or give any nuance to it. It simply paints it as a battleground for the good guys, the Americans to come in and fight a stereotypical Arab army who must obviously be the bad guys because... well, I guess because they are Arabs and they are in the military. Of course later they use a nuke to kill American forces but we later learn in Modern Warfare 3 that this was part of a global conspiracy orchestrated by Makarov and his ultra-nationalists in Russia. But ultimately in the original Modern Warfare the Arabs are the bad guys, the Americans are the good guys. But Russia gets the benefit of being a civil war so not all Russians are bad, just some. This could have easily been done in the Middle Eastern parts of the game but isn't. <sighs> Wake up. Wake up. Where am I? Where's Reznov? You will answer our questions. Do you understand? Who the hell are you? That's not important. What's important is who you are. What's your name? Fuck you. Where were you born? Kiss my ass! Staying on this topic of pro-Americanism and Orientalism, I want to shift the focus to the Black Ops games which were developed by Treyarch Studios. Now Black Ops 1 and 2 both tackle the Cold War and CIA. The first game focuses on the 1960s with the second game focusing on the 1980s. The first game actually has a very good story that takes you across theatres in the Cold War putting you in Cuba, Vietnam, China and Russia. It plays into a lot of the tropes and conspiracies of the time, including sleeper cells of Russian agents in the US and the assassination of JFK. The game is not without some merit in tackling some more problematic areas of this era and the CIA, and you can find a lot of troubling information in the game's terminal and the extra classified documents scattered around the various campaign levels. However, this doesn't really do anything to balance the scales of the problematic pro-US stance that the game takes. Now, one of the first missions of the game takes place during the Bay of Pigs, where you participate in the failed overthrow of the Fidel Castro government by US-backed Cuban exiles. Now at the end of the mission you are captured by the Cubans and handed over to the Russians, personally by a mustache twirling Fidel Castro. We killed you. No. You killed a double. You think we didn't know of your plan? We always know. Do with him what you wish, General. He's my gift to you, in honor of our new relationship. Just make sure that he suffers. He will know suffering beyond his darkest fears. 
I have plans for you, American. Oh yeah, you also assassinate his body double in the game. Now this is quite problematic for several reasons. There really isn't much context given to the invasion, so it plays into the whole narrative, US good, communist bad. For those who don't know, the US took Cuba from Spain in the aftermath of the Spanish-American War. They treated it like a colony while backing a brutal dictator in Baptista. Baptista abused his people and let the Italian Mafia essentially run Havana. Fidel and Raul Castro, together with Che Guevara and the revolutionaries, overthrew this government. The US then put an immediate trade embargo on Cuba and then carried out the Bay of Pigs. Whatever problems the Cuban system may have gone on to have, in this context they are hardly the bad guys. In fact, the US are far worse in the immediate context. But in Black Ops, all we really glance from this is Fidel is evil, communists are bad, and America and her allies were doing good trying to kill him and overthrow the government. Again, just like Modern Warfare, no nuance and hardly any context. So moving on to later in the game where you begin fighting in Vietnam in 1968. As someone who did three quarters of my third year of my history degree on Vietnam and wrote my dissertation on it, I feel I have some expertise on this subject. In my humble opinion, the American war in Vietnam was one of the worst imperialist wars of all time and definitely the worst war of the post-war period, a war characterized by casual war crimes committed by all sections of the US military. This quote by John Kerry, himself a Vietnam veteran but also a former president presidential candidate and Secretary of State in the Obama administration perfectly sums up how a lot of the war was fought. During a speech in 1971, Kerry said that war crimes like the Milo massacre were not isolated incidents, but crimes committed on a day-to-day -day basis with the full awareness of officers at all levels of command. More bombs were dropped in Vietnam than the whole of bombs dropped in World War II. The Americans used napalm to decimate the Vietnamese while spraying Agent Orange all across the country, which gave many Vietnamese and Americans various illnesses and saw their children born with deformities. The CIA had numerous units who went around Indo China, often without direct oversight, killing civilians by the thousands. One of these groups was the American guerrilla army known as Tiger Force. All this to stop a country from becoming independent from imperialist occupation, which the American OSS had actually promised Ho Chi Minh in 1945. But how does COD depict this conflict? Well, not well. While there is no doubt it may capture the brutality of the American experience in some ways, it still omits the Vietnamese from their own story. There are zero South Vietnamese soldiers in the game. The omission of the South Vietnamese army is extremely peculiar because in the battles like the one at Hue City in 1968, shown in the game, they made up the bulk of the fighting men. But only allies in this conflict are fellow Americans. So like Modern Warfare 1, the only natives in Vietnam you interact with are the bad guys. This helps play into the propaganda that America is always the good guys. So the Vietnamese you encounter are the North Vietnamese army but also the Viet Cong. You get up and personal with them in one scene where you are tortured by them in an underground base. You are forced to play Russian roulette and they kill Bowman when he won't cooperate. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. No, Doc! One chance makes me take it, okay? You can't kill me! You shoot, GI, you shoot! Fuck! You then escape the facility. In Hue City, you see the North Vietnamese army killing civilians for collaborating with the Americans. <laughs> Watch that, Lima Niner! Moving on! So in a conflict where America caused so much devastation on Vietnam and its people, the only atrocities you see committed are by communists. Only the Vietnamese do anything immoral, while the good guys in the CIA fight for the freedom of Vietnam. All South Vietnamese soldiers are completely omitted from their own story, making it seem like America standing alone against communist aggression. I think this is one of the most grievous mistakes of the franchise. It essentially whitewashes a conflict where the Americans consistently and often as a matter of policy carried out war crimes. It also totally ignores that many Americans were drafted and forced to destroy themselves in killing for American imperialism.
Mason, better take a look. This isn't over yet. The Russians want to give us one last display of brute force. Let's give them one last display of courage. You with me? Two sees the shift from the early Cold War to the late Cold War, sending the player to hotspots around the globe including Angola, Panama and Afghanistan. While Treyarch didn't botch the portrayal of the Soviet war in Afghanistan as badly as the Vietnam War, it still has some oddities. You play as Mason and go seeking the help of the Afghan Mujahideen with your longtime comrade Frank Woods and a Chinese intelligence officer Zhang. You meet up with the Mujahideen and participate in a heroic defense of their bases. Rahman, this is Woods and Mason, my two best men. We need weapons, not soldiers. <sighs> this should be good. You ride horses with your Muslim comrades against the overwhelming power of the Soviet forces. You also capture one of the protagonists of Black Ops 1 and take him back to the Mujahideen base and torture him. After you torture him, the Mujahideen betray you, beat you up and leave you to die in the desert. <laughs> No. No, you are and always will be our true enemy. They say America has always been their true enemy. Now, if you think about the context of this level, it doesn't necessarily make sense. Why would the Mujahideen suddenly betray the CIA in the midst of their war against the Soviets where the CIA are funding them? It seems to play into the stereotype of Muslims simply hating America because... Of course at this time many Muslims did have grievances with America, whether that was them back in the Shah in Iran or back in Israel constantly, which is still one of the most hot issues in the Muslim world. In theory, it can make sense for the Mujahideen to betray the CIA because of their grievances against the US. But again, COD doesn't bother to explain why they might hate America and what grievances they might have. They randomly betray you because you are American. So in short, the level looks like this. The CIA risks their lives to aid the Mujahideen fight against the Soviets, and after the Mujahideen betray you and leave you for dead for seemingly no reason. Reason. Again, what impression does this give people of this chapter in American history? In my mind, it just leaves you with the view that Muslims hate America for no reason and can't be trusted. America comes out looking good again. So to summarize how Call of Duty is pro-American propaganda with a massive hint of Orientalism. Call of Duty likes to paint some of the last century's worst war criminals as heroes and this can easily be seen in the portrayal of the CIA during the Cold War. The CIA are obviously the good guys while the communists in Vietnam are depicted as the unequivocal bad guys. Only the North Vietnamese commit atrocities and only they commit extreme brutality. In a more topical sense, Call of Duty's depiction of Arabs and Muslims is Orientalist and lacks any nuance. But our Assad regime is depicted as a stereotypical Arab country but the writers don't even bother to contextualize it by making it a real place. It's an amalgamation of everything your average Westerner may think about when he thinks of war in the Middle East during the height of the war on terror. A guy who looks like Saddam Hussein, his soldiers who seem to be a mixture of standard soldiers and more terrorist looking guys, and all have no real motivation apart from they obviously hate America. But why do they hate America? Is it ever explained? No. So in short, players may just think they hate us because they hate us. They hate our freedom. It helps perpetuate unhelpful stereotypes about the region. Again, this is seen in the Afghanistan level in Black Ops 2, where the game doesn't bother to contextualize why the Mujahideen may see America as its true enemy. It's lazy. So in terms of Orientalism, Call of Duty is the biggest video game franchise of all time. 
Millions of players play the story from all backgrounds and from all ages. To a lot of people, this may be their only exposure to things like the Soviet war in Afghanistan or the American war in Vietnam. For some, it may be their first foray into the history of these conflicts. And if this is the case, their knowledge of the wars will be completely skewered and will look on the American actions more fondly. Many of these people won't go on to study these things in depth, so they will not grow out of their views towards these conflicts. The video game industry in Asia and the Middle East is in its infancy, and as such cannot challenge the stereotypical depiction of these regions by the juggernaut that is Call of Duty. So let me know what you guys thought of the video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and leave a like on the video. If you want to check out me on social media, follow me at The Cavernacle, both Twitter and Instagram. I also have a WordPress blog where I write some game reviews, so go check that out if you want. I also have a Patreon with the link in the description, and I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has become patrons and stuff. I super appreciate it, and I can't actually believe people are actually willing to give me money for this channel. I'm just super, super grateful. And anyway, if you made it this far, thank you for watching.